Welcome to another episode of DD on the Spot. As always, I'm your host, Ryan Johnson. And before we get to our guest here today, well, first of all, you should recognize her. We have Sylvia back on the podcast coming to us from lovely California, where, I mean, I don't even want to ask her what the weather's like, but I will eventually, everyone, because, you know, I'm, I know I'm just going to get disappointed. But she's coming on to give us an update on what she's been up to. And obviously, I know since we're in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic, she'll talk a little bit about how she's been dealing with that. But most importantly, she's our current guest. Sylvia, thank you so much for coming on. Well, thank you, Ryan, for having me again. Well, absolutely. Well, I got to first start off with what's the weather like in California today? Um, As usual, it's perfect. It is probably about 80 degrees, maybe 80, probably a little warmer, actually, but almost 90 degrees. We've been pretty, pretty warm out here. A little too much. <laughs> well, you know, hey. They don't call it, you know, perfect weather for nothing, but it's just, it's just ridiculous. I mean, like I told her, it's perfect weather for me right here. We're in the mid seventies where, you know, I can go outside and not get burnt to an absolute crisp because it's cloudy out. But uh, before we get into that, Sylvia, why don't you give us a little update on what you've been up to this last year? I mean, I know it's been a, a weird year for everyone considering that no one would have ever predicted that it would turn out like this, but what have you been up to since we last talked? And I think it was August, so about 11 months. Um, actually... Uh, pretty much the same thing I'm always up to, working and training. Um, they just closed our gyms again uh, yesterday. So we had uh, them briefly open them. We had to train with masks on, which uh, was pretty brutal. Uh, I did it a couple times. It wasn't great. It, 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 was, uh, it was tough. But um, they just um, pretty much shut down everything on the inside now. So they can still do group stuff outside. Um, I think restaurants the same. We're all shut down except for outside dining. Uh, and um, I just found out my hairdresser got shut down too. So it's I guess we're almost back to where we were except they're still doing the outside stuff. Um, crazy busy at work. Uh, I'm a nurse, so it's just crazy busy at work. Um, Kind of a crazy time. It just seems so Twilight Zone-ish, you know? It's really weird. It's just a weird feeling. Well, I had enough of a struggle, you know, even breathing properly whenever I wear that mask, just because it's just... You're, so I couldn't even imagine working out in that mask. I mean, I would just say... Oh, it was really, really tough. Really tough. Hot. Oh, well, yeah, I can't even imagine what that what that must be like. So that's why, you know, I stayed clear of the gyms. But, yeah, I, I mean, I recently just heard, yeah, yesterday they're shutting down basically all of California again because of the, mm -hmm. the rising cases. But we were going to do this on Sunday, but then you had to be on call. So has that just been like what it's been like for you constantly where it's, you know, you're always constantly, you know, thinking like, oh, I might have to work extra hours just because it's, it's really starting to ramp up, it seems, in California? Yes. A lot of times that's what happens, um, depending on sometimes if things get crazy, they'll call. And I, li I work really close to home, one of my jobs. I have two jobs. But one of them close to home, and sometimes they'll call, can you come in now? You know, and I'm, I'm five minutes away. So a lot of times I'll do that uh, for a few hours, that kind of stuff. Um, and like I said, uh, the, the L&D, the labor and delivery, I'm a NICU nurse. But labor and delivery and Nikki's been really busy, and we're just kind of thinking it's because moms are very stressed. And we've just been booming. Well, I think also it maybe might be like they just want to get it over with because they, yeah, they are stressed and they're just like, yeah, you know, just, you know, is, as long as it's going to be, you know, safely done. But you also told me that you did have a little bit of a scare where you were quarantined for 10 days. What was that like? I'm, I'm still not quite out of that. Um, except, um, it, it, you know, except for the, the, the weekend, I guess I got to go. Yeah, no, that's true. But I have two different jobs. So one job let me go back. The other one wanted to still keep me out for a while, but I'm test, you know, I tested negative and I'm good. And, you know, it just depends on the rules for a specific uh, employer. Some of them are a little stricter than others. And as long as you have a, a, a negative test with my other employer, we're good. So, you know. But, you know, it, it, you know, I don't know. It was a little scary, I guess. But um, I think as long as you're healthy, um, I'm more concerned about people coming to me. That's why I don't like people to come to my home, because I am exposed to so many different things. That's that's my main concern. So. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, just being a nurse, you don't know. 
you know, what you're getting every day. And that's just more power to the nurses and the healthcare workers that are, you know, slugging this out. But has your training changed at all? Because I mean, I know that you, you told us before that you have like a massive or you have a nice, you have basically like a gold's gym in your garage, basically. But have you been changing things up at all when it comes to your workouts? Um, not really. I guess a little bit, you know, I don't have all the equipment. Like I don't have a squat rack. So I've just been doing squats with dumbbells and, you know, that sort of thing. Um, but other than that, I have everything else they need. So not really. And I, my trainer is so great, you know, Johnny, Johnny Casalena. And he, he, uh, immediately when all this started, gave us home workouts. He, he's constantly changing it up, even with the home workouts. And then when he found out I had such a good setup, he even gave me a, you know, more intense home workout. Lucky me. So now the training's been still pretty darn good. It's just hard. It's just hard to motivate yourself. Um, when you're always by yourself and it's, you know, going from garage to inside, from garage to inside, you know, but I'm working so much that it's, I'm, I'm actually really grateful to have a home gym because I don't know that I'd be able to go to the gym as often anyway, because I, I, I just am so busy. It's a lot of work right now. Very busy. When did you start collecting gym equipment? Has it been a process that's been over the last few years, or was it something yeah. where you just bought it all of a sudden? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I started probably about 10 years ago. <laughs> so, uh, hey, what do you want for your birthday? Well, can you get me this and this and this? And Or, you know, like last year for my birthday, I got uh, a full set of bumper plates and a bar. You know, things like that. Um, and then I bought myself a hip thruster. Um, which I'd been wanting to buy for a while. So I just right before the whole pandemic thing started, I bought that. Um, it's been a really long time, I guess. It's been probably about eight years. Well, yeah, speaking of speaking of birthdays, we're talking on July 14th, which is the day before my birthday. So, and I literally just told my parents all I want is, you know, some cash. That's really all I, you know, that's the best oh, you can cash do. cash is good. I don't want any possessions, you know, whatever like that. I got enough as it is. It's like, you know, hey, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. But when it comes down to also, I mean, just this change in mentality, how have you been dealing with this mentally? Because, I mean, it's just for so many people, this completely caught them by surprise. And it's just been an entire lifestyle change for so many people. You know, it's it's been tough. It's lonely. Um, I have, you know, a handful of very, very close friends that I really don't want to spend time with because I don't want to expose them to anything I have. So it's been a tough on my partner because there were a couple of times where, you know, and we're both being really careful. It's not like he's being lax, but there were times where, hey, can we get together with so-and-so? And I, I just don't really want to expose anyone to, to me. So unless we're outside, you know, or you know, going to be somewhere outside. And even that I'm not sure about, you know, anymore. So it's been really, really hard um, because you can't hug people. You know, I always hug my friends. I, I try to always spend birthdays with them, at least take them to lunch or dinner, things like that. So um, that part's been really tough. And I like the socialization of, of the gym. So that's my happy place. So that, that's been tough for me because I don't have that happy place anymore. And I like my, 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 my setup here, but it's not the same. I, I miss my friends, you know. So I'm, I'm just like a little kid, you know. We all miss our friends. Oh, yeah. I mean, I can – I mean, we're going up to a friend's cabin this weekend, and that's the only thing that we could think of where it's like, oh, yeah, we can still do that. And, I mean, um, most of us have already – already either already had it or they've been exposed to it, you know, months mm -hmm. ago. So, you know, hey, we – you know what 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 what's the worst that's going to happen so we're going to have some some fun up there but yeah i totally understand where you're coming from but has this pandemic affected your nutrition at all cuz i know that there've been some shortages throughout the country i mean minnesota had a meat shortage for a while just because you know the pigs were getting too fat so that they literally had to just slaughter a ton of them just because they were literally getting too big that they couldn't fit in the thing but has there been any shortages in california that you've had to deal with no the only shortage um that I noticed were uh, the shortages were besides toilet paper were um, uh, egg whites. And I just, I just, I always use muscle egg anyway. Um, so I just kind of upped my, my muscle egg order and that's what I've been doing. And then now they're back in the store, but that's kind of how I've dealt with it. Uh, but other than that, everything, we've been really lucky here. We've had everything we need as food wise. I haven't seen any other shortage, you know, 
is it hard at all knowing that you live in a place that has basically perfect weather to know that like you sh you can't really be going outside doing stuff? Because like in Minnesota, it's easier if it's like ninety degrees here and you're like, okay, yeah, I'm not gonna go outside anyway. But if it's like that, if it's that weather every day, man, I would be just itching to like go out to a beach or something like that. Is that harder for you knowing that like, hey, oh, it's perfect weather almost every day? Um, I guess it is. I've been doing a lot of yard work. Um, so I've actually planted a couple of trees, you know, and it's so funny because I've been able to dig those holes myself. And it's, it's hilarious because, uh, I, I dug, I, I planted, uh, we just planted a persimmon and then we planted, uh, we wanted to replace an old maple tree that had been uh, cut down. So I went to test the soil for the maple tree cause I planted the persimmon and John, my partner would normally plant the maple, but I thought, well, let me check the soil. He was inside. And so he comes outside and I'm like halfway through digging for the maple. And he's like, damn, you're doing that one too? And I said, well, I just came to check and if the soil's pretty soft, so I figured, what the heck? And so I ended up digging both holes. <laughs> so stuff like that, you know? <laughs> no, I mean, that's, and that's awesome. And uh, not even like, I mean, it's weird because I have a story closely related that where we have a neighbor over here that, you know, has, she's been living in this area since basically like the seventies when it was first developed. And, you know, we came here, like, I think it was like in 92 and I was born in 94. So she, uh, showed us some photos that she had, she had her kids facing like our backyard because they were, it was like their first day of school or something like that. And like all the trees that we have right now that are about like 50, basically like a hundred feet tall they were all just just recently planted so it was cool to oh, see that where wow. i mean i was like wow 25 years later basically it's it's, it's yeah, amazing to see yeah. to see how yeah, they take no, off it's crazy no and and it's it's really nice so i've been trying to kind of focus on things like that just uh you know working outside in the yard probably going to do the, the front yard so uh and i figure well you know it's it's a good workout <laughs> it's a good shoulder and back workout so uh I, I always said, you know, my rule during the winter is if I know I'm going to shovel snow, I am not doing a back workout because shoveling snow, that is the ultimate, especially if you get that, the worst type of snow. And this is coming from an expert here is when it's that, is when it's that snow where it's just barely below freezing. Cause then it gets that, it's really kind of like a watery and it's, and it really compacts together. Cause then that one shovel load of that snow ends up weighing about 80 or 60 or yeah, 60 to 80 pounds. Yeah. So, you know, I, like I, adding water. Yeah, I like that freezing. I like that, you know, like 10 degree, you know, five degree snow where it's basically it's just fluff and, you know, it doesn't harden up. So, you know, you're basically just, you know, just it, you're just going to town on. But what do you think is one body part that you think that you've most improved on since we talked to you last year? Oh, uh, probably my biceps. My biceps have come up a little. I've been, you know, really working on the biceps a lot. Well, here's where you embarrass us. Can you give us a front double bicep? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh my God! It's not even fair. Everyone, she's sixty-one years old, and that's just absolutely ridiculous. I don't even know. I don't even know how to. You know, I gotta definitely go and get an arm workout. And after talking to her all the time, so you know, it's. I mean, and that's and that's just amazing. But how have you? How do you think you've changed things up for the arms? Have you just done the same thing, just done it more often, or have you included new workouts in? Well, I think in the beginning we I was doing it more often, um, and I also have uh, some of the between uh weights so you know 17s and 20 you know and then 20s and 22s and 27s and that sort of thing so um yeah i was doing them three times a week in the beginning um we were doing we were alternating this one home workout you know so we're doing that six days a week so i was doing it every other day and that i i think really really changed things up and it's just different workouts you know you just anytime you change things up or at least for me um, and I really like hypertrophy training. I really, really like that, you know, lots of volume stuff. And then we change it up every once in a while. And I can't really, um, go as heavy, um, with the lower volume high intensity stuff, uh, because I just don't have that kind of weight here. Um, so, I mean, I, I have pretty heavy dumbbells, but that's about it. I don't really have, you know, like, I guess I do have a bar, but I don't have a rack to put it on. So I'm a little bit limited regarding that, but there's a lot, of, there's a lot of other things, you know, that I can do. So, so far so good. It's been not, it hasn't been bad. Well, and one thing that everyone always talks about is the mind to muscle connection. And that's just so important. Yes. But if you were to explain that to someone just on the street, how would you explain mind to muscle? Cause every guest that I have on explains it differently. And I think it all of them work the same, basically. I just think, you know, it, it, it's just about really feeling what you're doing, you know, asking yourself, do you feel that? Do you know, am I really feeling that? And 
you know, if, if it's almost like being able to draw an illustration and, and, you know, color that area in, you have to be able to feel it. You have to be able to, uh, I mean, you really have to focus on it. I, 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 geez, that's a good question. Um, it's, it's something that I think takes a lot of time to learn. It's not, I think what people don't understand is, is when they see a bodybuilder, for instance, they want to be just like you, they want to look just like you, but they don't under, they don't see all the stuff in between, you know, they just see the surface stuff. So things like mind muscle connection take, a, I think that takes a, a, a good amount of time to really learn. Um, and I've been, geez, I started doing mind muscle connection when I was in my twenties because I've always had really good training partners or coaches. And sometimes you think you're doing it, but you're not. And I've been you know, guilty of that as well. So I think it's more about really, really closing your eyes and focusing on that area and almost like, like, like in yoga where they tell you to breathe into it. It's almost the same concept where you're just I guess you could say breathing into that area that you're working on, tricep, but as long as you're really, really, really seeing it, because if you don't have that, it doesn't, you do not get the same prog. I mean, you don't make the same progress that you just don't. It's very weird how that, how that mind muscle connection makes such a big difference. I always say it separates, you know, a lot of bodybuilders from, you know, probably the average person because, and it, and it takes forever. I mean, was there a specific moment when you really started to say like, oh my God, I'm really starting to feel, you know, what everyone's talking about? Because for so many people, it takes them years upon years before they finally truly, you know, get that, you know, hey, your mind can control, you know, how much your muscle contracts and it can control a lot of the growth too. I think, um, honestly, I think it's different times for different muscles. There's times, I mean, I just got to where... I'm really, I've, I've really, I think, got really good at my mind muscle connection with my abdominals. So I thought it's like a lot of times you think you're training your abs and you're training your hip flexors, you know, that sort of thing. So I've gotten a lot better in that area. Or, um, you know, you think you're, you have a really good mind muscle connection with your arms, but then you're like, well, why am I not getting a pump? So what's going on? So. I don't know. I think there's there's a lot of things you have to you have to feel you have to feel it, but then you have to notice within that particular area that there has been a change. So it's it's there's this fine line. It's it's a tough one, but I think it's taken me um, several years and different amounts of time for each group. Like legs was probably the fastest one when I was when I was a lot younger. I got legs right away. It, yeah, it takes different amounts for different people. I mean, yeah, I, I have never met one person where they're just like, yeah, everything came into place one day where every single body part of mine was just... And if that does happen to you, everyone, give me a call because I want to talk to you then and figure out yeah. figure out what you were doing. But were you planning on competing at all this year before the pandemic or were you just planning on taking a year off before? What was your plans like looking like before the coronavirus hit for this year? Well, I was planning on doing my pre-pro debut at the Pittsburgh Pro and... Um... Then when all this started, um, I just thought, no, you know, this is a good time to just take a break and um, just really, really focus on 2021. And so I told Johnny that, you know, I, I think what I'm going to do is just, you know, just take this time to grow some more. And um, since I don't have to diet down as far and I won't be losing any muscle, you know, so just take this time and really, really train hard and just really, really push for that. Um, I'm not, you know, I, I think I've told you before, competing is not my favorite part of, of bodybuilding. I, I do it. <laughs> I, I enjoy certain aspects of it, the comparisons, that kind of thing. But for the most part, I love the training. That's why I do bodybuilding. I love the training. So I'm good with not competing for a year. I'm good with, you know, cause it's mentally, it's, I think it's mentally more demanding than, than physically, in my opinion. It's really mentally demanding. We hear that all the time, and I couldn't stress that enough. And, yeah, I, I got to say, like, if you didn't like the training, I don't even know why you'd ever like the sport because the training is 99% of it when it comes down to it. I mean, if you just if you if you just do that. But even though you're taking this year off, do you still work on posing at all? Do you still try to maybe come up with a new routine? Yeah. Yes, work on posing. I, I, in fact, it's funny because um, I am probably still going to go ahead and set up sessions with Kenny. So, um, And then I have another posing coach that I use locally. 
So I'm trying to find out when he's going to open up because Contra Costa, where he is, that's a different county, is still, everything's closed up. So they haven't opened up at all. So I would like to just pretend that um, if everything is going on as usual because I posing is important as training. So yes, I had I had planned to to do posing and I do it on my own. But um, <laughs> as I told you, I'm not the best poser. I've gotten better, but um, I really really want to make sure that I'm on point. You know, in every way. I'll probably do. My plan is to hopefully be able to do a photo shoot um, as a and use that as a goal, maybe. You know, so I have some sort of goal to work towards because that, that that helps a lot for me. No, yeah, it's it's definitely one thing that helps out a lot. And we hear so many times that, you know, that adds the motivation too, especially the, you know, like, yeah, hey, I'm getting ready for a photo shoot. And we've had some guests that have just done photo shoots. They've never competed. And they're like, yeah, that's enough of a prep, a prep for me. So yeah. And, and that's, and that's just so great. But yeah, that posing thing. I mean, I always say if any bodybuilder says they never work on their posing, it's like, I can guarantee every time you walk in front of a mirror, you do it just because that's just how, that's just how bodybuilders are. And I've talked to plenty of them where that's just, that's just going to happen. But also when it comes down to just deciding that this is an off season are you starting to you know maybe go for maxes or, or, or are you just, when it comes to the working out are you trying to max out now or are you just trying to just you know just get a pump or what's what's your mindset like with your training now I'm mainly just trying to go for a pump and and, and to just keep my mobility and everything um, um, very tight my keep my form very tight because I don't really have the, the ability in my in my home gym to really do PRs and you know or and it's just, I don't, I just don't have that type of equipment here. I can do, I probably could do, uh, I'll probably do that a little more um, when I'm back with my strength coach um, in Contra Costa um, with deads and stuff. Because I can do, I can do that with deadlifts. I have enough weight for that. So yeah, in that respect, I probably will. Just because it's fun. But um, I'm working a little bit on uh, some injuries that, uh, that I had last year that are causing me to have some immo some immobility in my right knee. So I have, um, I think I've told you that I have a slight scoliosis, so lumbar scoliosis. So um, it's affecting my, my right lower body right now, um, not to the point where I need to have an epidural. I just saw my doctor a couple of days ago. So it's not near as bad as it was when I heard it, you know, several years back. But um, so I'm going to do a little physical therapy and work on that. And so I'm going to more stress on working on that mobility and just keeping my form tight and, um, you know, just, just doing a lot more volume, things like that, to just keep myself still growing probably a little slower, but uh, still growing and making progress. Because I, I definitely, and I can definitely do that with my upper body. Well, and if you can grow during a lockdown, I mean, more power to you because so many people can't. But what has your relationship with cardio been like? Because for me, during this lockdown, I mean, cardio has been, you know, 75% of my workout where, you know, just because I have nothing to do and I'm just getting bored. So then I'll go and I'll walk on the treadmill for like 80 minutes and get, you know, like eight miles done. But it's just just because I have absolutely nothing, although I do have a blister on my toe right now that is just getting absolutely ridiculously large. So I definitely need to maybe cool it down for a while. But what has your relationship with cardio been like during this pandemic? Well, you're a better person than I because there is absolutely nothing on this planet that could get me to do more cardio than I'm told to do. <laughs> That's it. I do I do my time and I am done. I just it is not my favorite thing. Um, now I get up every morning and I do my fasted cardio. Um, you know my assignment, <laughs> and I am done with that. I have an elliptical here at home, and um, it's a it's an actual one I bought from the gym. So. Um, it's a, you know, it's a commercial, you know, elliptical. So I get on there and listen to my headphones and, uh, generally listen to motivational stuff or right now I'm listening to an audio book. So just something about you know, anything that has to do with growth or self-development or, or try to learn something new or, uh, you know, just, just to, to, to get me to, to get through it. But that's the hardest thing for me is cardio. But as far as extra cardio, oh, hell no. 
Hey, well, like I was telling her before, the main reason why I did this, or I told you this previously, is because I went to the doctor about three weeks ago, and uh, I've been doing a little bit of cardio up until then, too, just because I was bored, but then I took a, like a week and a half off of just not doing anything, just because I was so busy and flush with everything, but then I went in, and then the lady's like, oh, I'll take, because I was, uh, so I'm turning 26, so I'm going off my parents' health insurance, so I need, I was basically, I scheduled everything, I mean, I got, I went to the dentist, I went to the doctor within like the last, I mean, everything, I was covering all the boxes, so I knew that like, hey, you know, until I get insurance, because I'm furloughed from my job, too, and they don't have insurance when you're not working, so it's, um, so there's that, so I literally, I went into the doctor, and then they're like, oh, we'll take your blood pressure, and I have always had, you know, an absolutely dog crap diet, and I know for someone that has a podcast where he promotes a healthy and fit lifestyle, <laughs> that might not, that might, that doesn't really work the best, but, you know, I have been one of those guys where I've always said about those guys that I hated that would always be like, hey, you know, I can work out as much as I want as long as, you know, or I can eat as much as I want as long as I work out a lot, and that was me for the longest time, so I went in and got my blood pressure, and the lady's like, oh, it's 130 over 90 or whatever like that, and then I started, like, freaking out, because I was like, really? Because I knew I had a, I, I knew I had a somewhat higher blood pressure than normal, but then I started, so then she's like, oh, I'll take it again, just so, just in case maybe you're a little too stressed out, and I was like, well, I'm going to be stressed out the next time you take it. We took it five more times, and the last time it was at 140 over 101 or something like that, and I was like, <laughs> no. I was like, huh, I wonder why that came to be, so then no, 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 they started kidding. freaking me out with all, the, we're like, oh, you're getting close to the blood pressure thing, and then I was like, and then they're like, you look like you could lose like 10 pounds. And I was like, yeah, I, I definitely can. So I told him, I said, I'm going to come back in a month and I'm going to have lost, you know, five to 10 pounds. So then literally that day I was on the treadmill for like an hour and a half. And I've been doing that like ever since every day since then. So for like 16 straight days, just going nonstop. So yeah, that's, that's, I mean, they scared me into well, it. Good, at least so. you're doing something, you know yeah, I mean? Yeah. Seriously. They, they scared me into it. Reason. I had let myself go in the early weeks of the pandemic. I'm going to be completely honest where I was just, I just didn't care anymore. Cause I was just like, Oh God, this is something. But, and you know, so it's, it's been definitely interesting for me, but you were telling me before that like, there's some garlic pills that you can take for, um, high blood pressure. And I think we yeah, should, you, you should mention that on the podcast pills, because for um, anyone out there with high blood pressure. Of, um, we do a lot of, um, um, what we do is we, we take Revive MD subs, and um, they also have a blood pressure uh, formulation, I guess it's called. And so we take that too, but garlic pills, um, just kind of lowering your salt, we'll do it. Uh, that's why cardio, part of, part of the reason cardio is good, it's good for you cardiovascularly, I mean, obviously, but it's good because it gets rid of water. So a lot of a lot of times you're just holding water, you know, especially if you you've been um, lax just for a month or two, you know what I mean? And 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 honestly, I just don't think people should stress about that too much. It's something that that part of the reason we're eating and part of the reason we're going through all this is because we're all stressed out and everybody's doing it. And it's that's, I'm not saying that makes it okay, but it's not the end of the world, you know. It, it's it's not something I think people should beat themselves up about so much you know it's just this is a crazy time it's a really it's it's, it's scary it's a scary crazy time i wish you had been my doctor because he was the exact opposite where he's like you are so young you should not be like this like blah 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 like this is bad this is so bad and i was like okay you're really i mean i, I could take my blood pressure at home and it probably would have been like 180 over 200 or something like that if i if i went because i mean yeah he did not do a good job of sort of but yeah, for anyone out there who's struggling with blood pressure, because I know that's a big thing. It affects, you know, like a third of all people, you know, garlic pills and, you know, Revive MD. And I'll leave a link where people can go and buy that because I know, especially in this trying times, I mean, everyone's blood pressure is probably rocketing up sky high. But when when the coronavirus really started, was it noticeable at all in the place where you work? Or has it just been slowly getting more and more where it just start, slowly started to take over? Was there always like a lot of, you know, coronavirus patients in your hospital when this first started? Um, in the beginning, a little bit, I noticed um, they were having more, they were having people, people occasionally in the ER. Then people stopped coming to the ER and things were getting kind of slow. Um, and I think people were just stopped. They weren't, they weren't coming to hospitals. And then when they started opening things up, now what's happening, um, so that's been what, a month or two. And um, of course they, they predicted there'd be a surge. But what's happening is the people they're bringing in now are in their 20s, 30s, and 40s. So see, these are all the people that were partying and not wearing their masks and not doing what they're supposed to. Um, and we're not seeing as many of the older patients, so you're not getting as many ICU patients, that type of thing. We have always had lots of um, L&D patients. We've always had lots of baby, you know, premature babies. Um, but 
what's happening now is the moms of these, you know, the, 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 the COVID positive moms are asymptomatic. And to me, it's seeing an asymptomatic COVID patient is a scary thing <laughs> because this is this perfectly healthy looking person with no cough, no runny nose, no fever, no nothing that you could be seeing out in the street. You know what I mean? And you would abs have absolutely no idea. So that to me is the scary part, you know, and these are not, these are not um, older people that would stay at home. These are young people that are out and about, you know? So that's what we're seeing a lot now. We're not really, I have not, I have yet to take care of one baby that has tested positive though. That has not happened yet. At least not where I'm at. Well, that's the one positive thing about this pandemic. If there is one is that it doesn't affect the young normally or like the super young. As not much. as much. No, yeah, not as well. I don't even know if anyone's that super young has died yet. I bet there's probably been like one or two, but still it's, it's, that's good that it's, that it's like that. But out of the people that you're seeing in like the twenties or thirties, do they tend to be people that have more like health issues? Cause that's one thing that a lot no. of people, Oh no. Yeah. No, wow. that's the thing that's crazy. So, and, and honestly, I feel that, the, I mean, those are the people who are going to be fine. So I think what people aren't, aren't understanding about, you know, COVID-19 is it's not, you're not wearing the masks and, and all that stuff to protect yourself. You're wearing that stuff to protect other people from you. So what's happening is these, a lot of younger people are getting this because a lot of younger people aren't wearing masks. So they're thinking, oh, it's not a big deal. And after a while you start to think, oh, this is going away. And, and, and then they were, there was this theory about the sun, the sunlight would help because there are theories that it does. So like there's a very low percentage of COVID in um, homeless people and homeless people are out in the sun all day. So that's what they, they were initially were theorizing. So, but with the sun now, it's not, doesn't seem to be, <laughs> I mean, it doesn't seem to be helping. So um, I, I just think the problem now is the younger people have to understand that they need to wear their masks to protect Older people, it's people that, you know, are predisposed, asthmatics, diabetics, you know, and those are the people you're protecting. You're not protecting, you know, yourself, really. It's it's more like that, that commercial, I don't know if you've seen that Kaiser Permanente commercial. Do you guys get that out there where it's talking about, you know, count all the, the hugs you haven't gotten, all that stuff. That's a really good commercial because it's it's not about you. It's about all the people you've protected. By not doing all these things, you know, and it, and it sucks. I mean, I totally get it, but yeah. I mean, as and as someone that's already had it, like I got it in March, I still I still cover up my face because I know that even though I can't really normally get it again, or a lot of people say I can't, you know, I can still be I can still be a vector where I can still pass it on to other people. So it's. You know, that's, that's the one thing that sucks for me. Cause I'm just like, Oh my God, I should be the one person that's like going to like an amusement park right now. Just being able to like go on all the rides by myself with all the other people that have already had it. And, you know, so yeah, that's it. I mean, I think you're probably okay. I mean, I mean, you probably can't get it, but they're, they don't know. They're just saying, and I don't think you can pass it on, but I think some, you know, now that after you've had it and you've gone through the whole incubation period, I think you're fine. But the thing is, it's hard to say because they're now saying they're not sure. So, <laughs> and, and, and I don't know, like if the whole scientific community has been focused on this virus for that long, it's hard. I don't get how they haven't figured out all that stuff. I mean, they've had like four months and this has been the entire news, but I know it's always changing and ever evolving. So I'm not going to give too much crap on the, on the scientists, but it's like, it, it's like still people come on. And then, you know, we got to wait till January for a vaccine and then, you know, who's going to get, and they say we're only going to have like a million or so vaccines by January. So who's going to get the vaccines? That's going to be. A whole different thing. And is so it going to work? And is it even going to work? Because like flu vaccines, that's like a crapshoot. You know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. You can get a vaccine and still get it with the flu. So I don't think that, you know, the COVID vaccine is going to be much different. And, and as far as with the actual virus, it's a really, really different type of virus. And the thing with, with, with as, year, as the years pass, these viruses mutate and they get really, really smart. And so they change and they evolve and they do all these. And, and as we get older and as the world gets older, these viruses are going to get hard, you know, tougher and tougher to figure out. And I think that's the problem with the CDC and people don't do what they're supposed to do. I have gone, I, I think I might have even told you, I have gone down. We have this, one of our main streets here in Napa is Jefferson. 
And a couple of months ago, there were uh, hot rod races. People were, were racing down Jefferson, right? I guess because they didn't have anything to do. And nobody, there were groups of people sitting on the side of the road, all down Jefferson, no masks, big groups of people. And this was a couple months ago. So people aren't doing what they're supposed to do. That's the main problem. Most people aren't wearing masks when they should. Most people aren't sheltering in place. Yeah, you know, they're just not doing what they're supposed to. They're, you know, and I think that's one of the main problems. That's the main problem. <laughs> well, trust me, you're talking to a guy that lives literally 15 minutes away, where some in from Minneapolis, where something happened, where a lot of people have been going out and um, being together. I'll just leave it at that. Where uh, that's been a whole nationwide thing. So I, I believe I'm not even going to touch that with a hundred foot pole though, because that's just the most yes. polarizing. So you know, I'm not. But I'm just going to mention, yeah. I so I know about you know like people going out and not following. But, you know, hey, it's their right to do it. I'm not going to touch it, though. I'm not even going to mention it. But, but yeah. you know, but, you know, hey, that's just. But luckily in Minnesota, we have some of the lowest cases. I think we've only had, like, what, like 700 people die or something. Like, it's been, like, super, super low. And, like, even, like, the last week, it's only been, like, averaging, like, four people a day or something like that. So it's been. it's, it's Oh, that's really it's, good. Yeah, it's it's well, again, we have some of the best medical facilities like we have the Mayo Clinic down in Rochester, which is like an hour away. And then we have the uh, TC. So we we're we're lucky with that. But yeah, it's it's still I mean, it's just this is going to be known as like the year without summer. But I say, hey, as long as they get the NFL back, that's all I care about. As long as the NFL plays, <laughs> I, could care, I know, right? I could care so less about anything else in my life. Yeah. Out, no, no, uh, no sports. Like I think I like they just postponed uh, the show I would have done and changed it to October um the pittsburgh pro and i i'd be really surprised if they even if that happens i think gary Uded, who is the uh he's the the promoter he's just the nicest guy and i think he's trying to hang on for dear life you know just so that because he knows how hard everybody works to do these shows i honestly think that's a big part of it i know you know i'm not i'm sure he makes money off of it but he's just a good guy and i i really really have to give him kudos you know for trying to keep hold it together but I'll be really surprised that if they let them, because there's thousands of competitors at those shows. It is thousands. So uh, I'd be really surprised if that happened. You well, know. I was just going to say, they've just had shows this last week, basically, where, you know, guests have to have their mask on, and then, they, you know, they go on stage, and they pose, and I've had some guests that were all doing that, some guys and girls, and yeah, it's just a fascinating sight to see, and I say, like, don't, having them wear masks when they're already that dieted and depleted, first of all, I mean, they're going to have enough hard trouble breathing, so, you know, that's, I mean, better luck to them, and I was always nervous for that, like, with the comparators, I always told them, I was like, are you nervous at all that, like, since you're at such a weak immune system, basically, when you're about to compete just because you've dieted down so much. I mean, that's the one problem where I could ever assume because these people are some of the healthiest people on the planet when they're not, you know, all dieted down. That's the one time where they could be maybe affected by this. But, yeah, it's definitely been concerning with me. But now we'll go on to a more positive note because, you know, with all this – well, I was going to say, you know, I don't want to see all seem all dreary. This is more of a positive podcast I try to do. If I'm telling everyone, you know, this is the end and stuff like that, you know, hey, that's not going <laughs> to that's not gonna do well. But, I mean, one positive thing – that I think I can take out of all this is that, you know, people have a lot more free time that they can spend with their family and stuff, but a lot of people have a lot more free time too, where they could get in shape. And I always say one of the biggest problems is that so many people want to get in shape. They just don't know how to do it. They don't have the tools to do it. They lack the proper knowledge on either nutrition or, you know, just workouts. And if they were given that, I think that would really help. So what advice would you have for someone who's, you know, maybe even in California, especially when it's locked down again, where they can't even go to the gyms, I mean, there's so many ways that you can, you know, get a workout in without even having any equipment. But what advice would you give to someone if they were to say, you know, Sylvia, I have all this free time, but I don't know what to do in order to really start my health and fitness journey. You know, um, what I usually always tell people in the beginning, especially people that have never exercised, don't do anything, is, you know, just start by going for a walk. Um, and that's a start. I mean, and the thing is, is that I think is if you can figure out a way to put yourself on a schedule with that walk. So you tell yourself, I'm going to do a walk every day at such and such time. I'm, you know, it starts to establish a ritual. And that's the secret. The secret is to, to, to get yourself into a ritual. Um, that's the magic bullet, I think, for any type of fitness is consistency. So I tell them to start walking. And if you work with anyone especially in this time and age. Normally I'll tell people, you know, see if you can find a gym that you like, that's affordable, like a Planet Fitness, 
you know, and go there and hire a trainer once or twice. A lot of times they'll give you a, a, uh, um, a personal training session for free. Um, that's a way to do it. But in these times, look for people at work that you know exercise. If someone works out, ask them, pick their brain. You know, what do you do? What can I do? Do I need any equipment? A lot of times you don't really need equipment. I mean, it's nice to have bands. It's nice to have tubes, you know, to do, to do curls with, but you don't really need all that. There's, you can do push-ups. You can do, uh, you know, just squats with, with no, no weight. There's just so many things you can do, but the thing is to do something that you put into a schedule. You get up every day, you wash your face, you brush your teeth. I don't know. You can have a cup of coffee if you want, whatever you go for your walk, you come home, eat your breakfast. Maybe after that, you can, you know, schedule a little, doesn't even have to be that long, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, start with that, you know, educate yourself about nutrition. That's super important. Find out what you're supposed to be eating. Women, especially, they don't eat protein. Do not eat protein. Um, women do things like, um, a friend of mine asked me <laughs> not too long ago, well, what about in the old days they used, to, they used to say you should eat a banana in the morning? Well, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with a banana. Banana's fine, but you, that's a carb. You use that as your carb and then you have some protein with it. You know, people just don't eat protein. And if you're not going to build muscles, like, like driving a car with no gas, you know, you, your protein is your gas. Find out what fats are. Find out what carbohydrates are. You know, uh, peanut butter is not protein. Peanut butter is a fat. You know, stuff stuff like that. So I just think people really need to educate themselves, especially in our country, because people don't know nutrition at all. People think a pizza is a, is a, a really cheap way to feed a family. I mean, seriously. And that's, that's to me, pizza is a fun food. That's not something I eat for for nutrition that's something i eat on like for somebody's like a party that's a party food or a cheat day meal or, or something like that but i would never see it as a, a dinner you know what i mean it's just there's just no nutrition there you know unless you you put you know really fancy chicken on it or so i i don't know I, don't, I just don't see how that's good for you yeah i mean i couldn't agree more on the walking thing yeah it's one that we hear a lot and i couldn't agree with that more but i do have to add you know for anyone like if you're asking healthy and fit people at the office what they do like i ask every single first guest that i have on the podcast you know you have to be aware though that what works best for them might not work as good for you but it's always nice to have mm -hmm. that information because if i were to you know work out the same amount as you know one of my neighbors does or one of my friends does you know i'm more than likely going to get completely different results i mean it might still be good results and you know but it's going to be it's going to be absolutely different so, I mean, just be ready that you're going to have to do a lot of trial and error because unless you're one of those weird 1% genetic freaks where, I mean, let's be honest, you wouldn't really be needing to get in shape in the first place then because you're just genetically blessed and I hate you more than life itself. And if you're out there, you know, I know I'm looking for you. But, um, yeah, just try and just stay positive too because, I mean, I always say with my generation where everyone wants everything now and they want it yesterday, this is the one lifestyle where you're not going to get that. And again, if you do, give me a call. But you are not going to get it. So it's going to, you know, I, I always like to compare the, the difference between being an alcoholic and being someone who's obese where if you're an alcoholic and you go one day without drinking, that is significant progress. But if you're an obese person, you work out for one day and you look in the mirror, nothing's going to have changed. So you're really going to need to just maintain that mindset. But if we were to talk to you a year from today, where would you like to be at in your fitness journey? What are some goals that you'd like to achieve if we were to talk a year from today? Um... A year from today, um, I would have liked to make um, some real improvement on my injury, which I think I will. I think that um, I, I have a pretty good plan, and I have a great doctor, so I think we'll we'll make a lot of progress on that. And I'm hoping I'll be able to do my pro debut next year and go to Pittsburgh and and get into that. And I may do um, haha. <laughs> My my second goal was to do an open show where I just compete against all ages. Um, um, so I may just do that next year as well. So I may I may do that before I do my pro debut, something local because my friends uh, in the area never get to come and you know unless they want to fly to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So that might be a fun thing, you know, to where I can actually have some friends come and cheer me on. It might be kind of fun. Um, maybe do something locally. Um, 
And I don't know. I just want to keep improving. It just blows my mind um, how, my, how, how I'm still improving. I can't believe it. Um, so I'm going to hang on to my trainer for dear life. I mean, he's the man of my dreams, and that's who I'm sticking with. And um, it just, it's just really crazy. Like, like I was telling you earlier about digging the holes in the backyard. I was like, I cannot believe at 61 years old, I can still do this kind of stuff. And it's really, it's really nice because I don't have to depend on anybody else, you know, and, and I can do these things for myself and it's actually fun. I mean, I don't have to pay other people and, you know, I can just do it myself. It's kind of cool. Yeah. And that's, and that's so amazing. Is there anyone that you'd like to give a shout out to before we wrap things up? Um, probably my partner. I should give him a shout out, John. He's just always been so supportive. He's great. He's just always there for me. And, uh, my trainer, of course, Johnny Casalina, who is the man, he's just amazing. He's just such a great trainer. Yeah. And I'll leave a link for all that stuff down below. And I couldn't think of a better way for her to embarrass us again. Can you give us another front double buy? And she's 61 years old, everyone. So this is just absolutely ridiculous. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah. I mean, that's just amazing. And, you know, again, going to depress me. Now I got to go, you know, work out arms again. So, you know, just to get me stuff to catch up. But again, Sylvia, thank you so much for coming on. I really, really appreciate it. And uh, I mean, just honestly, stay safe down there being a nurse and we wish you nothing but the best. Well, thank you, Ryan. Same to you. Absolutely. Well, again, you guys, this is Ryan Johnson, DD on the spot, signing out. Have a great day, everyone.